She's known to her readers only as Lori, no last name, and even Lori is a pseudonym, a substitute name to hide the horror of what she went through. Speaking of nowhere man, she epitomizes that same stripped of all identity feeling of just plain not being a person. She's the author, this Lori is, of an incredible book entitled An Affair of the Mind. The Voice of Prophecy did a radio series based on the book a few years ago, and I'm returning to it as we continue to think about the spiritual condition we all have of feeling like we don't count. Because an affair of the mind is a no-holds-barred description of what it's like to be the wife of a man addicted to pornography. Unfortunately, too, too many Christians, yes, even ministers, are involved. What's it like to be tossed aside while your life partner looks at pictures instead? What's it like to go to sleep alone with nothing but a bare spot next to you in a king-size bed while your husband is out with a hooker? Lori finally found herself sitting in a bare medical office waiting to have her blood drawn, then waiting for the results to come back so that she could find out if maybe she had the HIV virus. A nurse, not realizing the hurt she was causing with every innocent word, said, I don't understand why you are here. Nothing on Lori's chart indicated that she might be at risk. And Lori had to force the words out. It's my husband. He has a sexual addiction. Oh, and the nurse left the room while Laurie waited alone. I don't suppose many of us can imagine what it must be like to be traded in for a four-color spread in a men's magazine. You were supposed to be a wife, a lover, a partner in all things good and bad. Your husband's desire was supposed to be for you. That was part of your identity, part of what made you, you. I'm the woman. He promised. You could always say to yourself, if it was a hard day or the tail end of his long three-week business trips, I'm the woman he wants. And then to find out that he would rather have the non-woman, the imaginary partner in penthouse or the phony sex toy from a CD-ROM like Virtual Valerie. Lori writes with compelling honesty about what it's like to be the scorned wife but she also puts her finger right on the problem with pornography. Because the user simply trades one nowhere woman for another. Here's what she says about it, and I'm quoting. Pornography lies. The first lie is that the viewer is having an intimate relationship with the men or women involved. Playboy, in particular, is a master at creating the illusion that you know this month's centerfold. Pictures showing her everyday life and stories crafted to make her look like the girl next door create a sense of knowing her. But does Lori's wayward husband really know Miss October? Of course not. She is nothing but skin to him. Images of private body parts stamped by four-color presses into six or seven million magazines. Pornography strips the wife of her identity and Miss October of hers as well. It steals a person's worth on both sides of the counter. Lori goes on to share this damning reality, and I'm quoting, Pornography and spirituality do not coexist. If a person is spiritually aware, he has respect for himself and others. Pornography sells and feeds off of disrespect for self and others. Well, I didn't set out to make pornography the topic of this devotional today, but I urge you, if this is an area where the enemy of God's children has tempted you to realize the truth, a vice like pornography is wrong largely because it does the very opposite of what God does. God values people. Pornography devalues them. God says, you count because I created you. 
You matter because I gave you a character, a soul, a spiritual nature. Pornography tells us you're nothing but a toy. Centerfold skin and breasts and genitals. Lust candy for a selfish man's eyes. God says, I see you as a child to be redeemed. I make the ultimate sacrifice, my son, to meet your needs. Pornography says, I see you as a tool to satisfy my cravings, serve my needs. I suppose a spiritual fool could respond, look, the Bible doesn't say a word about porn. And he'd be right. The word of God came to us a long time before Hugh Hefner's empire got started. I recall, though, a little piece of what I would call sanctified fiction, where the great Christian writer Marjorie Holmes writes about how she imagines the childhood of the boy Jesus. He and his young friends, his playmates, are playing their childhood games one day when an older boy pulls out a little toy he got from a passing merchant. It's a... Uh, a kind of pornography, a little rubberized kind of nudie doll you can squeeze into all sorts of obscene shapes. Speaking of Hugh Hefner, don't think for a minute that he invented that kind of stuff. It's been around for centuries. And these boys gather around giggling, all but one boy. Teasing, they push the little nudie doll into the hands of the boy, the young boy Jesus. And with a cry of pain, of horror, he drops it in the dust and runs away. And the others begin to hoot at him, but one kid stops him. Just shut up, he snaps. Leave him alone. You know he's different. Well, that's fiction. Marjorie Holmes wasn't really there to know, and neither was I. But I do know that Jesus Christ looks on people and values them. You and I are not toys to him not pieces of human flesh to be played with or bargained away. And even though the Bible doesn't mention Playboy magazine by name, it has plenty to say about people who feel like they've been used, stripped of their human value. I've always liked the quiet little Genesis story of Leah, the wife of Jacob. She was the first wife, but not his favorite one. Her own husband, liked Leah's younger sister more. Rachel was his favorite. Rachel's kids were his favorites as well. And many, many nights, Leah would go to bed alone, knowing that her husband was over in the other tent, the spiritual soulmate of little sister. Over in chapter 30, she actually had to bribe her own spouse to spend an evening with her. So loneliness didn't come along in just the last half century, along with the so-called sexual revolution. Listen, disobedience to God's perfect plan has always had the effect of taking away our self-worth, our value. Have you noticed how in the very first chapters of Genesis, after the first sin there at the tree, Adam and Eve instantly began to look around for clothes, for some pathetic little covering to give themselves worth, and they also immediately began to protect self by accusing the other. It's not my fault, it's her fault. Well, let's return to some of the thoughts this Lori had to grapple with. Because her self-worth, her feelings as a woman, as a wife, as a life partner, were completely shattered. There were broken shards of ego all over the floor. But take note of the maturity, the spiritual wisdom of what she says when all is said and done. And this is incredible. Your worth depends on what God says about you, she writes. Not what others say about you or even what you say about yourself. And here's what God says. Fear not, for you shall not be ashamed, neither be confounded and depressed, for you shall not be put to shame, for you shall forget the shame of your youth, and you shall not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. She adds a fascinating little note right there, telling us that the Bible word for widowhood actually means forsaken or discarded. 
which is exactly and precisely what the wife of a porn addict would be feeling. You know, the Bible, ancient as it might be, is amazingly in tune with what we need, isn't it? But Laurie quotes just a bit more scripture for us from Isaiah chapter 54. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And the Holy One of Israel is your redeemer. The God of the whole earth, he is called. For the Lord has called you like a woman forsaken, grieved in spirit and heart sore, even a wife wooed and won in youth when she is later refused and scorned, says your God. For though the mountains should depart and the hills be shaken or removed, yet my love and kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. In the clear word paraphrase for this passage, verse 6 reads like this. You're like a wife who's been deserted and distressed in spirit. You're like a young wife whose husband has turned away from her. You know, that is right on target, isn't it? Then this grand closing line, but the Lord calls you back home. It might not be a porn abandoning you've been through. It might be in some completely different veil of tears where you became a nowhere woman, a nowhere man. That line is for you right now, but the Lord calls you back home. Back to the home where He is your support, your friend, your partner in love and in life. Why not turn in that direction right now? 